Hello, Marcel here to give you a quick rundown of the new foam particles and rope physics features of Lucid plugin for 3ds Max. To start, I just preloaded a scene which I had saved previously, and it has a basic setup to create some fluid simulation. So we have the outside container, and we have a simple fluid box inside of it. I have set my scene scale to be quite small, so this container is actually 7 cm by 7 cm, and this box is also quite small, it's 5 cm in all of its dimensions. However, these units can be easily scaled up if you want to. So I have my box set to show as particles, and inside my global simulation I have the gravity set to minus 10, and most of the parameters are zero except for cohesion, which is 0.1, and some viscosity is here, so my resolution is about 20. I have quite low sub-steps and iterations, which which makes the simulation quite quick. So let me just quickly record and see what happens if I simulate my fluid and it is nice and robust and I can see the preview right away. The new feature in this build is our new foam particles and these particles allow you to simulate splashes. If you look on the toolbar there is a new button on the rightmost side and if you click this button it will add a new lucid foam object to the scene. By default this will have 10,000 max particles but I have set it to 20,000 in this scene. And the rest of the parameters, if you hover over the spinners, you will get a little bit description of what they do. I will cover more of this in official documentation. So once you have the foam created, I will just assign it white color for aesthetics and I will re-simulate my scene. So now during the simulation, you can see that the foam particles are forming and disappearing over time. So if I just play back the scene, we can see our foam particles in action. Just like the other Lucid modifiers, we can select our Lucid foam object and inside the options, we can uncheck the show as particles option and in this case, it will show it as a mesh. And I set my granularity value to pretty low to be able to actually mesh these particles. If I go back and play it, you can see that the foam particles now appear as a mesh and I can probably throw some kind of a texture on this to make it even more realistic. I'm just going to go and convert my water to be meshed as well. So we have two meshes and I'm going to assign some material to the water just to make it appear slightly transparent and more water-like. And I'm just going to reduce the opacity a little bit so we can see the foam forming at the bottom of the tank as well as at the top. Foam in Lucid applies to all of the liquids. You cannot have per object foams. So if you have multiple fluid objects, which includes particle flow, you will be able to use a single foam object to simulate splashes in all of those Lucid geometries. To show the next feature, I just reset my scene and I'm just going to add a spline in my viewport. This feature is rope physics, which means that we will be using curves such as splines or NURBS curves to simulate things like ropes and chains or anything else that is cylindrical or tube-like. So I just created my spline and the next step is to just throw any of the Lucid presets on it. It doesn't matter which one you use, you can just use the first one on the list. And if you go into the Lucid modifier, you can see that we have a little curve settings drop-down present inside of our user interface. So for curve simulation in the current build of Lucid, it is important that you manually apply radius because otherwise you might have to wait for a while for it to create really 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 small particles. So I'll just set my radius to something like 2 for now and if I press simulate right now our curve will just start falling down under its gravity. So the next step will be to actually fix one of the points of the curve or we can fix both of them to make sure that it doesn't fall but instead it will dangle from one of its ends. So let me go back to my spline and I'm going to go into the vertex selection mode and select one of the vertices. Fixation with curves is the same way that you fix vertices in cloth or inflatable object which means that you just need to select one of the vertices and the vertex which you select will stay in place while all the other vertices will be simulated by Lucid. So I have selected this vertex and if I press simulate now this vertex will stay in place and the rest of it will start dangling. And right now you can see that it's kind of stretching which means that our simulation might need some adjusting and if I go to my parameters I can change my sub steps or iterations or I can even increase my particle size to something like 5 to make it have fewer particles and a more stable simulation. The same way that I fixed one end of the curve I can go back and I can select both ends. Let me just show end result here. So if I do that and go into my simulation 
calculation mode that we can see that the curve is fixed on both ends. Just like cloth and inflatable fixation in Lucid, you can go ahead and throw something like linked X4 modifier on one of these ends and you can make them move and be kinematic inside the scene while the rest of the rope is simulated using Lucid. If you want to have more than one curve, you can just create another one, another line, and you can create as many as you want. Then you have to go and attach them using the attach option inside our line base object to make these objects all into one max spline object. So let me just select all of these ends for my spline. And when I simulate it, you can see that all three will be simulated by Lucid. And rope physics doesn't only apply to spline objects. You can go and create NURBS curves, either a point curve or a CV curve. You can also throw Lucid modifier onto them and select their ends. So if I go into sub object and select a point here, and here I can go into sub object and select maybe both of the ends. Then if I start the simulation, you can see that all of them are treated equally by Lucid and they are all using rope physics. Some of the parameters that you can control with rope physics are listed inside the Lucid modifier. And by default, the spring configuration is one by one, which means you will have a chain of single particles connected to each other along your curve. If you don't want that, and instead you want to have a little skeleton of particles, you can have four by three or four by five configurations. So let me set a four by five here, and then set the spacing offset to a different value. So let's, for example, choose three. If I simulate, this rope will use this new configuration. And then I can go and manually adjust things like spring stiffness. So let me set this to a larger value like one. And this way I can control the way that the ropes preserve their initial shape. And in fact, I can go into my global properties and also affect this by changing the number of sub steps to something like 40 and maybe change the iterations to something like 15 to even increase this preservation further. So you can see they're almost not moving now because the solver will attempt to keep those shapes for you. Also, just like cloth and inflatable objects, you can assign and bind forces to these curves. So if I go into my forces and I create a little wind and I'll just move it sideways, I can bind this wind directly onto my curves object and I will only do it to this one, not to the other two. I will go and increase my wind strength to something bigger, like maybe 50. And once I do that, you can see that the wind is actually blowing onto the curves and making them move sideways. So these are just a couple of new features that we have added to Lucid Physics, and I hope that you will find a good use for them. Thank you very much for watching.